So hi everyone and welcome to this video on the welfare comparisons between a monopoly and a perfectly competitive market. So we're gonna uh, try and interpret this sort of uh, welfare disparity that we're getting under these two market structures in both an intuitive light and in a graphical light. And what we're gonna do in the next video is do uh, the comparison in a very mathematical way using calculus. So for now, we're just going to try and analyze that difference intuitively and uh, graphically. So uh, under the assumption, of course, that we have a linear market demand and your typical U-shaped AC and MC curves, uh, from a societal perspective, and I led on to this in the illustrating a monopoly video, we can say that okay, a perfectly competitive market or perfect competition, okay, it's clearly preferred to a monopoly. And that's because the total output in a perfectly competitive market, that's QPC, is greater than a monopolistic market, which is QM. And not only that, the price okay, that gets charged in a perfectly competitive market is less than the price in a monopolistic market. So we have those uh, initial conditions there because uh, the monopoly, uh, the perfectly competitive market structure, under that market structure, firms in the market are able to supply more, i.e. a higher QPC, and they're able to charge a lower price. And another thing that we can sort of note is that monopolists, okay, are less efficient, okay, are generally less efficient than perfectly competitive firms. And this stems from the fact that monopolists generally charge higher prices. Now, what do, I, what do I mean by this? When we discussed perfect competition, we said that the long run price is equal to the minimum average cost. And that was the condition that we had because firms are allowed to enter and exit the market and that uh, it will push the price towards that level, uh, towards minimum average cost, wherein there's no abnormal profits. In a monopoly, okay, because there's no entry or exit and because there's just one firm in the market, the price that the monopolist will charge is generally greater than the average cost of the monopolist. And this re represents a misallocation, essentially, a misallocation of society's uh, resources. And uh, it could be better allocated okay, in some way. And we're gonna try and discuss that as we go along. So uh, in general, as a summary for what we discussed so far, consumers okay, under a monopoly are made worse off. So consumers are worse off. And we will see in the graphical analysis later that uh, the consumer surplus, which is a welfare of consumer, uh, which is a measure of consumer welfare is much lower and uh, that monopolies are inherently inefficient because, again, there's no entry and exit. The price of a monopolist will always be greater than the average cost. And in the long run, okay, the monopolist can certainly earn some positive economic profit, whereas perfectly competitive firms, okay, perfectly competitive firms are not going to earn a positive economic profit. Uh, so there's no abnormal profit under perfect competition. So let's take what we learned here in Stride and we need to show that objectively. So we need to do some analysis on welfare. We must be objective by our claims. And essentially, we're going to show that the monopolist earning positive economic profit will benefit okay, at the expense of the consumers. But the gain of the monopolist, i.e. the gain in profit of the monopolist, is less than the loss in the consumer side. And it implies that the society is worse off. Okay? The society is worse off than, uh, than if it were operating perfectly competitively, i.e. the society is worse off because of the existence of monopolies. Now, how do we measure okay, societal welfare in this case? Well, societal welfare is essentially the sum of all individual consumer surpluses plus the sum of producer surplus or simply consumer surplus plus producer surplus. So let's illustrate this, uh, this sort of relationship uh, graphically. Okay, so 
suppose that we were under a perfectly competitive market okay and when you're under perfect competition okay the good produced uh, the amount of the good produced will be when demand equals your supply of course so that happens here at point e and at point e the firm uh, the market will supply this much q star and the market price that will be charged is p star okay so market price is p star market supply is q star so in this case okay the marginal value to consumers okay the marginal value to consumers uh, of the last unit consumed okay it equals essentially the marginal cost of producing the last unit and in this regard okay we can say that perfect competition is welfare maximizing because it will produce the largest sum okay bear in mind okay it produces the largest sum okay largest sum of consumer surplus and producer surplus it doesn't mean that it has the highest producer surplus or something like that it's it's implying that it has the largest sum okay of any market structure and uh so we're gonna try and get what consumer surplus and producer surplus is now or try to recall what it is so the demand curve here we have a demand curve here and it essentially represents the value that consumers are willing to pay or their maximum willingness to pay for each good and essentially on a societal standpoint it's society's marginal benefit curve and the supply curve which is essentially as we said in the perfect competition module our marginal cost curve measures the opportunity cost to society of producing each unit of a good and therefore what the firm would have been willing to accept for production and the sale of the quantity of the good okay so uh, we have our demand curve and our supply curve here. So, consumer surplus, okay, consumer surplus, okay, so we have consumer surplus is the difference, okay, the difference between, okay, what is willing to pay, what consumers are willing to pay, what consumers are willing to pay, and the market price. Uh, and the mar and essentially the amount that they choose to pay, which is essentially in a perfectly competitive market, the market price, okay, and graphically, okay, that is represented by our uh, area here, which is uh, so we have our consumer surplus, which is this shaded area here. So that's the area under the demand curve right above your market price and that's your consumer surplus area or uh in our terms here say this was so let's label this a so this is p star a e okay so that's our consumer surplus now the producer surplus okay producer surplus is essentially okay the difference between the total revenue earned okay from the sale of a given quantity of output and what the firm uh of, of a given quality of output quantity of output and what the firm would have been willing to accept for the sale of the uh quantity of the output or your total variable cost or because we're in the long run or your total cost and essentially okay this is just a profit Right? So that's the difference between total revenue and total cost. That's just profit. Right? And your producer surplus, okay, your producer surplus, it's essentially okay, this shaded area here. Okay, so that's shaded area there. And uh, let's label a point B. Okay, and essentially that area of producer surplus, that is B, okay, uh, B, P star, uh, P star E. Okay, so that's uh, your producer surplus. And if we add the two areas, okay, adding the two, add the two, we get societal surplus or social wear, uh, welfare, so social surplus. And that's equal to CS plus PS. And in area terms, that's just essentially BAE. 
Okay, so that entire triangle there, the entire area, is your societal surplus. Now, that's the case in a perfectly competitive market. Now, let's try and analyze uh, these when we get to monopolies and perfectly, uh, let's compare a monopoly in a perfectly competitive market. So let's have a monopoly here. This is monopoly. So in a monopoly, okay, if you recall, okay, uh, the optimal condition, okay, the optimal condition for the monopolist is that it should uh, use the condition that marginal revenue should be equal to marginal cost. And that occurs at point F. So at point F, MR is equal to MC. Therefore, the monopolist, okay, the monopolist will charge this price, so that's PM, and it will produce this quantity. So that's uh, QM, okay? It will produce that quantity. Now at that point, okay, at that point, okay, what we'll notice is that, uh, uh, we have now, uh, we can sort of measure, okay, we can sort of measure what uh, what the consumer surplus is and the producer surplus is of a monopoly. So the consumer surplus of this monopoly is essentially, okay, is essentially this area here. Okay, so that's the area under the demand curve, okay, above equilibrium price, okay, above equilibrium price. And the uh, the cost uh, the cost of a monopolist is if we uh, bring it near MC, so we have here, say some point say uh, P naught, okay, so uh, that's P naught there, and uh, what you'll notice is that the cost of the monopolist is just uh, this uh, this much, okay, uh, the cost of the monopolist is just this rectangle here therefore it earns okay so it earns some positive economic profit equal to this much okay it earns this much of uh, uh, profit okay so given that it has this much profit there's some sort of uh, abnormal profits right but there is no entry or exit under a monopoly so this is our case that we have here now let's compare this case to when we have a perfectly competitive market. So we have perfect competition here. Okay, perfect competition. And if you recall, the condition that we said for perfect competition was that price should be equal to marginal cost and that occurs here at point E. Therefore, under perfect competition, okay, the quantity that will be produced is Q star and the price that will be charged is, okay, the price that will be charged is P star. And I want you to immediately note that, okay, uh, P star is much lower than PM and that Q star, okay, is greater, okay, is much greater than QM. And this is our point earlier that uh, the quantity that in a perfectly competitive market is much greater than a monopolist and the price that is charged is also lower. So uh, it implies, okay, it implies that uh, generally we should expect more of a uh, sur uh, surplus or a sum between consumer and producer surplus in this case. Now, let's analyze it, okay, let's analyze it. So what we'll have is if we try and mix these two graphs together, so let's mix these two graphs together, okay, we have PM here, okay, and essentially, right, this was the amount that, uh, that the monopolist will charge, and this QM here is the amount the consumers will, uh, is the amount, sorry, that will be supplied in the market, and we can see that, uh, we can see that there's this difference, of course, with the price that the monopolist will end up charging. Uh, so we have a lower quantity and a higher price. Now, let's analyze now the loss in consumer surplus and the loss in producer surplus. So under a perfectly competitive market, okay, under a perfectly competitive market, the consumer surplus was this, 
this entire area here okay and uh what what we notice that okay what we notice that in comparing it to the monopolist the monopolist is this one this is a perfect competition the difference is this area here okay this entire uh trapezoidal area here okay and this part of it this part initially okay is some income transfer okay it's some income transfer from consumers to the monopolist okay monopolist under the case of a monopolist and this small triangle here is essentially your consumer dead weight loss okay that's your consumer dead weight loss okay and in a perfectly competitive market there are no abnormal profits so uh there are no abnormal profits in that case and we end up also because uh in this case so notice we've lost this entire triangle here under a monopoly there's this part here that we left unaccounted for and essentially that's the producer okay that's the producer dead weight loss and that's essentially due to the fact that the market could have produced Q star, but since we were under a monopoly, it only supplied QM. So because of no entry or exit and no control, we also have a deadweight loss equal to that area there. So I hope that you can see that in terms of um, in terms of welfare analysis, of course, it's it can easily be seen that in a perfectly competitive market. It is far more allocatively efficient because it has no dead weight loss. Whereas in a monopoly, okay, we have this area of a dead weight loss. And I hope that you can see how the income transfer happened from a consumer to the monopolist. And what we'll do in the next uh, or in the subsequent videos is that um, we will try and analyze all of these in a more mathematical light. And I think we'll get it more there when we start with actual examples and compute for the actual values. So thank you for your attention.